I'm going to keep talking about symmetry this week. I've been very abstract with symmetry, but now I'm going to bring it back to its origins by actually talking about symmetries of shapes, in particular polygons, squares, pentagons, hexagons, and so on. Each of these shapes has a symmetry group. And if I put the shape centered at the origin, so that the center never moves, then the transformations are linear transformations, or matrices that go from R2 to R2. So for each polygon, I can ask what the transformations are. If the polygon has n edges and vertices, 4 for a square, 8 for an octagon, then this symmetry group is called a dihedral group. The notation for the set of transformations is d sub n, where n is this number of sides or edges. So d4 is the symmetries of the square, d8 is the symmetries of the octagon, and so on. I'm going to talk about the specific transformations that make up the, these dihedral groups, but first, it's time for me to actually define this word group I keep using. The set of all matrices was just a set. But the other matrix collections I've defined have been groups, the general linear group of all invertible matrices, the special linear group of matrices of determinant 1, the orthogonal group of orthogonal matrices, and now dihedral groups. So what is a group? Well, it's one of the basic abstract structures in mathematics. Here is the definition. A group starts with a set, some things. These things have some kind of multiplication defined on them. I can take two things in the group, G and H, and put them together in such a way to get new things, written GH, also in the group G. I'm thinking abstractly here, so this product can be any kind of thing. Multiplications of normal numbers, matrix multiplication, composition of functions, whatever. It's an abstract rule for putting things together. The multiplication needs to be associative but non-associative non examples are hard to come by, so I'm not going to focus on that property. One of these things in the group is the identity element, usually written E. It has the property that it does, doesn't do anything under the multiplication. For any other G in the group, the multiplication EG or GE, they might be different since commutativity is not assumed, is just G. This is like multiplying by one for numbers. Nothing happens. Also, all things in the group have a matching element G inverse, called the inverse. The negative one here is just notation. This may not be any kind of reciprocal or function inverse. It's just another group element. But if you multiply by the inverse, you get the identity. That's what an inverse is. This is the structure of a group. It's a pattern of behavior of interaction. Anything that fits this pattern, no matter how strange the inverses and multiplication are, is a group. You already know many groups. The integers are a group where the quote multiplication unquote is addition. Product and multiplication are the abstract terms, but they just refer to ways to put things together, and addition is a way to put things together. The identity is zero, since adding zero doesn't do anything. The inverse of a is negative a, since a plus negative a is zero, the identity. And the negatives are the reason that, that I need the integers here. The natural numbers don't have inverses, so they are not a group. The rational numbers without zero are a group with the operation being normal multiplication. The identity is 1, multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything, and the inverse of a fraction a over b is the fraction b over a. This works because a is not zero, since I am excluding zero from the set, so I don't divide by zero when I take this inverse. If I had all of the rational numbers, I would get division by zero. So this group has to be all of the fractions except any that evaluate to zero. Similarly, the real numbers without zero are a group with ordinary multiplication. The identity is again one, and the inverse is again the ordinary reciprocal. Now, finally, Matrix groups are groups. The multiplication is matrix multiplication, the identity is the identity matrix, and the inverse is the matrix inverse. This works for GLN, all invertible matrices, and now you see why invertibility was the key. A group needs invertible elements. The set of all matrices is not a group since they are not all invertible. The set of all invertible matrices is a group. Then the other matrix groups are groups with the same identity and multiplication, they are just smaller groups inside GLN. I have to find the special linear group, the orthogonal group, and the special orthogonal group. That's the idea. A group is any mathematical thing with this structure. 
Matrices are a very important environment for groups. This video covered the basic theories and ideas, and in the next video I'll do some calculations with a dihedral group to explore its individual particular structure.